under, under the scope. So here we are, Jared. I don't know if this is the inaugural edition of the Scope Fall Film Flam. I think it is. So that means the Autumn Film Festival is in full gear. Yay! High alert. And also, this is the first time we've ever broadcast from the mobile, this particular mobile scope studio. What I like to call Studio Cruise. Studio Cruise. <laughs> and this is my first uh, video movie review, so I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Um, so we've kicked off the film festival season with um, a little film called Don John. Don John. Tell me about this film, Jared. Who directed <laughs> it? Who starred in it? Uh, People want to know. People right. are asking questions. Don John is uh, direct, written and directed by Joseph Gordon-Levitt who will henceforth be known as JGL. Yep. It's easier to say. Uh, he also stars in the film, yep. along with Scarlett Johansson, mm -hmm. uh, Tony Danza. Uh, Joseph Gordon... Hewitt? Lewitt? <laughs> what? Julianne Moore? Uh, he's best known for his role in R Roseanne as DJ's friend for two episodes, who by is? the way. Joseph is. I'm confused. I'm just telling you what he's famous uh, for. Okay. He's not famous for Batman. He might have been in some other movies. We're not sure. No, no, no. He's no. a newcomer, though. Yep. And, uh, yeah. 30 Who Rocks, Julianne Moore. Did I say Scarlett Johansson? Skojo. Sco Scarjo. Scarjo. Yeah, Scarjo. What is this? She is uh, a beauty, is she not? She's not bad. She's uh, referred to as a dime in the film. Yeah, show. that means a perfect 10. Yes. And, uh, so, and there's other people, too. So, yeah. this, this basically the story is... Don John is basically what you call a Guido. Yeah. If he's, you've seen... Uh, if you've seen Jersey Shore... He is right out of that. He's that type. He's a gym tan laundry kind of guy. Yep. Even th Although he's more of a... He doesn't tan. He's a gym... Uh, Clean. He likes his his pad. He likes his car. He likes his friends. He likes his church. Yep. He likes his family. There's very few things he cares about, but these are the things that he's enumerated at the beginning of the film. Yes. Um, these things recur throughout the film. They are sort of touchstones in his life and patterns yep. that are reproduced as the film goes along here. He's a mid-twenties fella, maybe a little older. I don't know for sure, but yeah. he's, he's definitely got a pattern in life that Indeed, he, doesn't really seem like it's going anywhere, and it's focused mostly about scoring with the lady on yeah. Saturday night. But he seems to be happy with it, at yep. least, at least Content initially. Content with it. Um, he's a bartender, and his his M.O. is that he, of course, picks up the ladies in the bar, and he, uh, I forget what the term was for it, but there was a, there yeah. was a term they had for it. Smashing? Basically, he smasher. Smasher? He smashes them, takes yeah. them home. He stole that term from me, by the way. Some, uh, has some uh, sex meaningless with them. Meaningless sex. Meaningless sex. Uh, but really, his real love, his real passion is pornography. Yeah, he is a porn addict. <laughs> uh, he's, uh, he likes how he's able to, uh, oh, that's all right. We're stabilize fine. the camera. It's all just, it's the visceral, it's the miss unseen of the review. I don't know. <laughs> I do not know what that means. <laughs> that's a film term. You're a dime. Um, <laughs> he likes the fact that he can just sort of turn off and, and lose himself yep. in the pornography. And uh, it definitely has affected his behavior, even though he isn't, doesn't necessarily realize that. Yeah. So, at one point, he notices uh, Scarlett Johansson's character, Barbara, in the bar, and uh, he's intent on trying to pick her up, only she's going to play a little harder to get. Mm -hmm. uh, her angle is she's very much into the uh, romantic comedy type yep. film, so she's got her own idealized version yep. of how relationships should go, uh, and that affects her behavior. Yes, she makes him wait and wait and wait, wait and, wait and, and wait. she also changed is makes a very uh, specific effort to change certain behaviors of his. Indeed. And then also discredit things that he likes in a very sort of subtle, yeah. underhanded she's, way. She's trying to mold him into the kind of guy that she yes. has sort of idealized from her love of romantic comedy. Yep. She wants that, uh, that guy who will do anything for a woman and anything she says. And... She thinks initially that this is uh, Don, or John, sorry, his name is actually John. Yeah. Um, but uh, maybe he's not the right guy for her. Anyway, and mom, his mom just wants him to meet someone else. Yeah, so. Have babies. Um, so anyway, we probably won't get into too much of the story, but there's yeah. some ups and downs. Uh, he eventually, he, uh, he uh, uh, is encouraged to go to class in the evening by... Uh, Barbara, and he meets a uh, another woman played by Julianne yeah. Moore. Who's a bit of a Looney Tune. She's a little Looney Tune. She's had uh, some stuff go on in her life, and she has some emotional problems. But she sort of um, so starts to evoke some change upon yeah. our, our our Don John. There's a weird connection between the two of them. Yeah. That kind of evolves. <laughs> so anyway, which is, which is weird. It's weird. Yeah, I don't want to get too much into the yeah. plot because it's definitely you know something you want to see. I think yeah. so. 
what else do we don't talk about? So, yeah, I mean, uh, you have some pretty good performances in here. Surprise uh, turn of performance by uh, Mr. Sir Tony Danza. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think he's, it, your, he's your typical Italian hothead father type. Uh, he yeah. really loves his football on Sundays. And uh, he understands what a TiVo is, at yes. least he says he does. <laughs> uh, Joseph Gordon is fascinating J in this movie. JGL. JGL. Yes. Uh, he, he, don't you think? I mean, here he is. He's a guy that's playing essentially one of Snooky's boyfriends. Yeah. And you just don't, you don't, he brings a depth to it. It's surprising. You sort of think that he could very easily lapse into parody. Yes. Um, and, it, it, and not be a character that you can really rally behind and yeah. like, but... I don't know, he does a good job of it. Yeah, he's always treading the line. I mean, yeah. it's the it's a razor's edge. That's the only way I can explain it. And he never really goes over it. You know, even when he maybe is playing something that's closer to you, something you would see on MTV. Sure. He just kind of gets it. I mean, you feel for this guy I pretty mean, much he, from the he onset. He has his douchey moments, but it's sort of, ex his behavior is at least sort of, Explain, yeah. if not justified, justified by, and rationalized, and yeah, it's yeah. and it's it's really interesting. I mean, all of the key characters have have a, a nice depth to them and a nice roundness to them, and they're not just cutouts for yeah. the most part. Um, it's really interesting. Yeah, I this mean, <laughs> I think in general this is a very challenging movie for me. Um, tonally, it's and I don't know if it was just the audience, but. There's a lot of comedy in this film. I, I think it, the comedy is very front loaded, though. Yeah, it's. I think the comedy might be, as you like to put it, a little too on the nose sometimes. That that might be my that might be my only real complaint with this movie is that uh, sometimes it that part may have may lapse a little silly or a little sure whatever. I think it's a good, I think it's yeah. uh, I would agree with you on that. I think it's also a good gateway into the film and into the yeah. world. Something we um, and, 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 and by establishing it sort of as funny and, and, and it's okay to laugh at these characters, it also allows them later on to sort of challenge these expectations sure. they have of them, which I think is really, really definitely done. Yeah, and the one thing we really haven't got into is this movie is, f you know, we talk about addiction to porn, but yeah. it is very sexually charged film. It's a lot of sex, uh, you know, and I want to see more movies like this with you more often, as huh. far as I'm concerned. Date night! Uh, but, <laughs> with the fellas. But the thing about it is, is I think it is handled so suavely and, and just smoothly. It's, it's... It's really curious. Like, they don't, they don't make a joke of the sex yeah. part. It's, it's presented as a way of life, and how it is presented feels very natural to any of us. I agree. It's, it's, it's handled yeah. in an adult fashion. It's not treated as comical or, or it's not too prude. It's not too no. grotesque. You know, it strikes a balance, and it really tries to uh, portray it in a very adult manner. Uh, a healthy manner. Like, yeah, that, I, I think that's the key word. It's healthy. It feels, it feels like anything you would find in a movie that didn't have sex, you know, or a drama or something like that. It, yeah. It's it was, it's curious to me. It's all it's it's hard to describe because I've never really seen a movie like that before. It, and it sort of raises some interesting questions about uh, you know pornography and its effect on our yeah. you know sexuality as humans. Um, maybe you could make the case that maybe it comes down a little too hard on pornography and sort yeah. of damns it a bit. I sort of too, got that feeling too harshly, but yeah. at the same time, it does raise you know an interesting question, or at least. Uh, forces the audience to at least consider, like, you know, the content of yep. pornography and 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 what it can do in, when yep. consumed on a daily basis yep. um, in that quantity and how that can affect your behavior and what your expectations are yes. of a relationship. Absolutely. So, you know, it, it's a good balance. Yes, it is. I'm going to hold the uh, camera there, Jared. Turning a corner, folks. Turning a corner. We're, we're going literally, into the. We're literally turning a corner. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, this movie has a lot of stuff that we certainly didn't see this summer. Oh, yeah. Um, I, as as a directorial debut, opening the garage, for JGL, I have to say that it's a really, and a writing debut as well, it's an extremely brave choice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and daring choice, and handled differently, it could be a disaster. I think and it was... I, executed fantastic. Yeah, I just, I mean, we talk about, there's just certain, 
devices that they use in this. Yeah. They use in this movie, like the repetition of life. Yeah, you see the patterns over and over. Yep. There's there's this, a specific sequence of scenes that you see multiple times in the film. You see him driving to church. You see him in church. Yep. You yelling him, and he's driving, yelling. You see him. Well, not always, but you see him giving yep. confession, and you see him having yep. dinner with with the family, the family afterwards. And every time you see that, it's sort of like kind of checking in with his mental state yes and you know you can tell by how 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 angrily he's driving or how or how normal he's driving how he deals with confession you sort of get a idea of how mm -hmm. he is evolving as a character yeah. or where his present mind state is and it's interesting when as that process goes along and how it sometimes will slightly shift yeah. here and there things just little things or some of the the pattern he has when he's having sex with women um, how you sort of see that play out or like the opening montage of when he's describing who he is and how that how that parallels the ending montage yeah. some of the same structure is there but yet the story it's being told is different you know or the evolution of who he is and his life and the change in his life yep. um, you know it's not you know, it's not uh, something that's like Citizen Kane in that sense no. but the fact that it's there and you can see it is pretty amazing, I think. Yeah. Uh, for especially considering the subject matter of him being a dumb Jersey boy, who is a big muscle guy. Sure. How you can turn that character into someone that you're really rooting for and you're hoping can uh, find his way and find yeah. his meaning in life. If I if I could, uh, you know, pose a criticism of of the film, I think it may be his transformation at, by the, at the by the end of the film is maybe a little bit too abrupt and a little bit too yeah. uh, complete. Yeah. And how it happened is, you know, it's there's probably shortcuts taken. Sure, we've but talked I mean, about. we're talking about you know a hundred minute film or whatever, yeah. so you gotta take some shortcuts. What I really liked, and I will go back to this, is the whole repetition of patterns. And so, you know, you said earlier, he's his his life is very regimented. He's got a lot of routines that he likes like that, mm -hmm. and the film is presented very much in the same manner. Um, what's nice is that you get to you get these little moments where those routines break and his or, or his activities alter and it's sort of you see that contrast and it's really i don't know i'm just i'm i'm really kind of awestruck that this is his directorial and, yeah. and writing debut because it just it feels like a very very mature film mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. for someone who hasn't been doing it that long so bravo jgl bravo jared looks right at the camera <laughs> so uh yeah let's give it a score shall we we should the scoop score is Three and one half stars. So three and a half it is. Yeah. Our first fall <laughs> film flam. Indeed. 2013 edition. We have that's, more coming up. That's a pretty good, pretty good start, folks. Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll have to see. Yeah, I know you're a little wishy-washy about the next one. Where we'll we see. go, we'll see. We'll see if Shane's involved. Yeah, I haven't even brought that up to my uh, my my well, Barbara, maybe, as you say. Maybe Barbara wants to go yep. instead of you. Maybe Barbara would go. That would be fine. All right. So yeah, great start, great movie. Uh, I would recommend it as would, you would get out and see it. Opens on September 27th. You're a little prudish. This might be a little tricky for you, but you might learn something too. Yeah. Open yourself up. So until next time, <laughs> go fans or even dirt bitches. Ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves once again at the end. I hope you've enjoyed our time together. I know I have. Fear not, Scope Faithful. The days shall pass as if they were but a moment. And Jared, Adam, and Shane will return with another thrilling episode. Until then, send your comments to comments at thescopeshow.com or leave a voicemail message by dialing 612-21-SCOPE. That's 612-217-2673. Thanks for listening, faithful fans. This is Tony Partington saying, Arrivederci. Tune in next time to another terrific edition of The Scope.